What is going on guys, Wiser here, and Brick coming to you with the recap of The Last War for 2.0. Uh, it was uh, one of those Tuesday night spins. Um, you gotta think, a lot of clans are on a very, fairly, we'll just say, similar um, war search schedule. Now, um, it ends, you know, your, your range wars uh, end on Sunday at some point. So generally, sometime between Sunday, late afternoon, like we're looking at like sort of Eastern or Central time, whatever, say um, mid-afternoon to the evening uh, a lot of clans respin right then so then that war ends again on the tuesday and a lot of clans respin tuesday night so if you kind of spin at the right time you can sort of ensure that you're going to get a decent matchup and we happen to land it's almost like the potluck same thing i mean a lot of clans, it's the exact same thing Pot looks a little more arranged, but midwinters, uh, great war. Uh, 2.0 is victorious, 112, 110. Uh, these guys just uh, beat up on Invicta, actually, I think one by three, four stars at least. I uh, not 100% on that. I didn't actually get to do that recap, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I've been I missed missing Invicta recaps here and there. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's life. It is what it is. I obviously don't do this for uh, any sort of uh, part of my prof profession whatsoever. Um, Anyhow, uh, Fantastic War, really good on both sides. You know, Midwinters, uh, Dither, Dillon, it's missed quite, left quite a few 10s on the board, and I know they probably weren't happy about that. Um, I know they had, uh, I don't think actually either side had to use really any bullies. A lot of Town Hall 10s now, guys, lots. Uh, oh, yeah, they had to use one at least, it looks like. Yeah, that's it. So, anyways, I know they weren't 100% happy with uh, their performance up top, uh, and it kind of end up being the difference in score. Uh, nice Town Hall 11 versus 11 triple there by South Fence. We will get to that in a minute. Definitely a lot of town. You know, our Town Hall 10s uh, I think had a great war. I think that we were overall really happy with their performance for sure, uh, and our nines did well. I don't think we had to use. Let's double check this fact. What is that? Yeah, see that Inferno's back. That's one of the numbers I'm showing. So yeah, I don't think. Oh well, do we use? I don't know. Whatever, doesn't really matter. Cleared up those nines. Got a lot of Town Hall ten uh, triples. In fact, not even gonna really show the nines unfortunately, uh, because there's quite a few uh, replays at the tens that I, I I have to show. So let's just jump right in here. We're gonna start with number twenty. This is Sean. I think Sean had a six pack this warp. Um, you know, going against these level one infernos, decides to bring 17 bowlers with a golem and six healers as well. So that is a very interesting choice. You know, it's always going to be the three bowlers on, or sorry, the three healers on either side of a funnel. Drop five bowlers or so. Um, get get the funnel created on the outside and just force everything else up the middle. Nice little baby dragon loon combo there. Fortunately, does not get right on the edge of that air defense placement. Um, does not get that arch tower out of the deal. So uh, that sucks, but nice try there, Sean. So here come the first healers. Drops them on the golem. I thought that was interesting. Uses the golem, right, to, to still do the same thing with the bowlers, but they're keeping this golem at insane health value. And actually, me and Grady have been talking. Grady would like to do an episode about funneling because you're going to... I mean, everyone knows how to funnel, but we're going to talk about some fine details in a video just about things to think about when funneling, and then this kind of stuff won't happen. Um, it's, it's just such a basic principle that pretty much is in every single war attack at every single town hall level. So um, we feel, you know, it's maybe time to go over that again. I know there's definitely a lot of videos out there, but nice job uh, by Sean here using these miners to sort of protect his king, get them in there, keep the bowlers moving into the core. Unfortunately, that bomb does do a little bit of damage, but with the healers locked on, they're A-OK. -okay. Just got to rip through this town hall. And down it goes. Queen's going to step up now, take care of that inferno. <clears throat> and this king, even though it walked, is just doing cleanup on the outside. And I've mentioned this in other videos. Um, it's super important to get that cleanup going early. Um, so uh, the reason, you know, sometimes your queen will do her job at your at your entrance for your kill squad, but then she'll take a hike to the outside and go for a walk. And sometimes it works out really well because she essentially is just doing cleanup on one side. Uh, you just got to be aware of when stuff like that happens. You can't adjust, right, with your hog placement or minor placement or whatever it is, right? You, you just want to know that you're going to need to support 
your hero uh, with some with some of your troops. You might have to change up your deployment of your hogs, uh, whatever it is, right? But uh, when you do that and there's only trash to go, you get tree stars, just like Sean here. Sorry, there's a cannon left. But down it goes and tree in the bag. Nice job, man. So that was number 20. Um, this random matchup was actually, uh, I, I forgot to mention, Midwinters did have an extra Town Hall 11. Um, but uh, other than that, it was, it was fairly even, I would say, from what from what I saw. Uh, I think we were uh, right neck and neck with the Town Hall 10s. Uh, 18. Check out the Iceman going here. Loving the Valks, still old school. 17 Valks, he's going to bring with this with four healers. Gets the minis down for those free buildings on the outside. Thanks for the mortar. Three more minis at the 12 o'clock location. Just getting a nice little funnel created with no worries whatsoever. Let's go ahead and drop the queen. We're going to drop these four healers. She's going to walk down and then continue her way into this little nook. Excuse me. So here come the healers finally. Just a lot of building on the outside there with no defenses at all. Like just good percentage there for really six minis and then this little bit of walk. He's already got 20% of the base taken care of. <clears throat> so there she goes, goes into that nook I was talking about. Rage spell goes down. We're going to rip through those point defense. Some nicely placed wall breakers under the rage. Just rip that wall right open. A few hogs in. Let's get that clan castle lured right out. Here it comes is a P.E.K.K.A. and a Baby Drag. Very interesting combination. You're going to have to go ahead and just hit the ability here, but no big deal. Down it goes. Let's hit it up. Down goes the P.E.K.K.A. That is taken care of nice and handily. She's going to step up and get even more great value out of that. So here come these Valks, these 14 Valks with the King. Rage Spell just throws them into the base. They're going to do a little bit of a walk and then come these Miners for 3 o'clock. Miners is going to support. The Valks are so fast. They're just... a at the almost the same rate as these miners they're going to slow down on some of these buildings valks are going to move up ahead and do some tanking looking good at this point does lose his queen there but with these miners coming in and now that that second inferno tower is taken care of the healers are about to lock on do a little bit of healing on the valks and the king just perfect king's going to just sort of escort the miners as he rounds the rounds the corner here at six o'clock Really, like you look up here, there is a little bit of danger, right? At this point, I'm sure he wasn't 100% sure if he was going to come away at this. But when you look at that pack of miners with the whiz behind it helping out, the king there with the healers on them, even though the healers are about to go down, if the king would have just went, just walked to the air defense, bro, it's right there. Like, really, man. <laughs> like, unbelievable. Stupid. <laughs> so finally it goes down, but the healers are toast long dead by then. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hit that ability. Miners, you know, it, it's just, it worked out perfectly. The king just tanked while well, the miners worked on the outside. Finally all the outside's dead, so they come in, finish things off. King is still at 50% at health at this point, so let's finish this off. Tree in the bag for the Iceman. Nice job, my friend. All right. Moving on, at 17, Sean with the second uh, second three of the war. So this one's got level two Inferno. It's definitely a little bit more of a tougher, well, quite a bit more, well, yeah, I don't want to get into terminology here, but um, definitely a more developed base than the, his first three star. Uh, I, again, though, just like you saw in Isis Attack, just free buildings. Four minis, four buildings there, five buildings for a fifth mini. Uh, gets that wizard down again free free mortar again on the outside lots of just free percentage for these uh, these minions and this wizard right uh, queen is now going to walk her way on over to this cannon and if you look at what he's doing here like there's now such a gap on this side of the base he can essentially just send stuff in right to this inferno tower compartment uh, so here comes this golem now from uh, 11 o'clock again with the healers. I like this, right? It's tanking that expo, but th really like th it's not doing any damage to this stuff. Test wall breaker, perfect. Couple more in. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a small bomb there. Was there? I don't know. Something blew up. Maybe it was the mortar, but it it uh, killed one of them. But uh, I don't know. He still ended up getting it. Anyhow, all these bowlers coming in now in just this huge gap. He's just 
like this, unfortunately this uh, elixir mine didn't go down on the outside over here but it doesn't matter everything's gonna get sucked in the core poison now i'm gonna take care of the hero uh sorry take care of the clan castle and uh get this queen as well i believe she steps up here in one moment no not quite but it doesn't matter look how fast she goes down these rocks smashing over her head king jumps into that inferno tower uh with the uh, ability hit perfect but like everything's just this death ball in the middle right like that's your sort of goal now the only bad part is things like that the dgb so it, I'm trying to think it see I, I didn't see how many bowlers because the rage was down they're all colorful and stuff but uh, he lost almost all of his bowlers to that dgb so at this point though you're like okay i still got a couple healers up golems to and tanking there is only after you know the miners sorry as well <laughs> miners working in see you dropped them at 10 o'clock but that was they they got that building on the outside i was talking about and just work their way around and they all kind of meet up in the middle though i, I mean a cc full of miners is going to take care of a whiz tower and a cannon especially if they're under a heel down goes that cannon Let's fast forward this a little bit kablam kablam <clears throat> nice six pack sean tree in the bag all right next up qc love this girl so, uh, level 1 Infernos, um, but upgraded point defenses all around, uh, you know, has the level 3 expo down, right? So, um, QC does a really good job again. Like, these these sort of free buildings, whoops, these uh, free, I shouldn't call them free, but um, I don't know. I Like, why wouldn't you have the arch tower there instead of in the middle? And then you couldn't do that. Just a thought. I, I think about little things like that when I'm base building. Um, sometimes you give up some, but definitely not, you know basically six minions got five trash buildings uh so giants are now in healers are down on the giants and let's go ahead and drop the bowlers everything's just going to kind of work into this uh very linear base uh, basically like a little mini hghb here and here come all these bowlers just the mass bowler coming in out of the rage gonna smash that inferno giant goes in so really nice job with that because even though there's only one giant you need that giant or a valk or something to get ahead of those bowlers because if you step on the dgb like you saw on sean's attack they're they're gone <laughs> so absolutely good to get that rage down quickly and make sure you let a giant or a valk or something or your king get ahead of those bowlers into that core of that base trigger those bombs and get them in behind and you are going to look just as good as qc does in the raid or in real life i don't know <laughs> Oh, QC. Good to have you in a recap. I love it. Really, really nice to see a lot of our tens coming around. With the friendly challenges, guys, it it really made a big difference for this game. I know Town Hall 10 is not what it used to be with all the crazy Lalos and stuff like that. But regardless now, um, it, you see people practicing the friendly challenges over and over and over again and then you see them get the results in war and it's just really cool i don't know i think it added such an awesome aspect to this game so love it good job qc tree in the bag uh Polly j number 15 going in on or number eight going in on number 15 <clears throat> so Polly is just going to go right ahead with this um, cold-blooded sort of minor, mass minor. I've been seeing this a lot with cold-blooded or shattered at uh, Town Hall 10. It's getting a lot of good success. I've been using the shattered version, um, where essentially you're doing just a normal entry, um, right? I, like I would have dropped a second golem up here. Um, now, a big he just used his queen and some wizards to make a funnel and do damage. Another way of seeing it is when you use bowlers, you know, eight bowlers maybe behind the golems, and they just smash so much of the base. So you get really good value out of your kill squad, and then just mass miner in with like 25 miners or something like that. Keep them healed, maybe bring a rage for them, uh, depending if they have, you know, getting stuck on things like town halls. There's a few, there's, I mean, yes, yes, it's it's definitely a crazy style attack, this this mass attack. 
but there is a little bit of uh, nuance to things, right? You got to know where to heal. You want to heal the bombs. You want to heal when they're going to get stuck above ground. If they get stuck on a bunch of skelly traps, they get stuck on clan castles, things like that. You want to get heals down. Um, other than that, it's just... <laughs> drop a bunch of miners uh, well uh, sorry i shouldn't say that other than that it's your entry because your entry has to still sort of set the stage for you to drop your 35 miners and get them to go in the sort of pathing you want them to now th there's definitely a lot of more than in my opinion <laughs> enough room for error we'll just say uh with this attack because you can definitely definitely get away with some stuff but um, it's not just, you can't just build 40 miners and drop them and think you're going to just heal through a, a base or especially a max base. Uh, level two infernos are a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Mainly, I should also say the m more mass miner attacks I'm seeing are on lower level infernos, not necessarily max infernos because level two miners get ripped up pretty handily by max, inf by, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say max infernos, uh, level three infernos, but. Anyhow, Pauly J coming away with this one. Inferno is going to be the last building to go down. And down it goes. Tree stars in the bag. By the skin of his teeth. <laughs> nice job, Pauly. Um, oh, I got a couple more here. Nice. A lot of content. Zerdzy just killing it at 10. So I sort of stand corrected what, from what I just said, because as we see, is level three Inferno Towers in front of us, and Zerd's still doing a mass miner. And a lot of this is again, but from what I was saying though, is the entry, right? You need to create that funnel. You need to get create the space and sort of help manipulate the pathing for your miners uh, in a fashion where they're not going to get stuck on things and just get beat on, because they will die. You can't just drop a whole bunch and, and expect they're going to three star. So. Um, it is a mass attack, but um, there's more than just spam to it. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, Zerdzi, look, clearing out this one side, of the, one side of the base. He goes ahead and opens up the wall down there. The queen is going to walk her way up. I don't think he wanted the queen actually to walk that way. I'm pretty sure he would... In fact, I guarantee he didn't. He wanted the queen to walk in there, and the wall, the wall breaker split. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, so you had to drop an extra one to open it up. But by the time that took place, uh, she had already locked onto a building on the outside. And it was it was GG for her. But if think about it. if she he, he had walked her in here, took out this Inferno Tower, and essentially would have got the Queen, the CC, this whole little 9 o'clock chunk. Then he could have dropped um, this from this uh, top section and worked his way into the core and met up with her in the core and then dropped all these miners from the outside and just work down through the Inferno Tower. That's, I'm pretty sure, was his plan. I remember actually reading his plan uh, before he made the hit. Uh, but really nice adjustments, right? He still has his queen alive. Still has healers alive. Lost one, I think. Bowlers are taking a little bit of damage, but the healer's locked on now. Um, you know, he's got this huge clump now. Hits that a king ability. Finally gets to this super large compartment. And he's got all these miners doing work down here. Has no real worry of, uh, of the Inferno Tower locking on. He can keep them healed up as they work their way towards the Expos. Pretty sure he hits a couple bombs here. Nope. I thought there was a bomb over here for some reason that uh, hit the miners on the outside. But uh, his queen's there too, right? His queen still, she walked all the way up and now she's walking all the way back. Got a miners and a couple bowler or a bowler and a wizard doing this cleanup on the outside. He's got these, got these miners working into the expos there. Like there's just too much left for this base to handle. Really, there's only an archer tower to go and look at what's left. Zerdzi just kills it. Nice tree star, buddy. All right. One more. The only, I think only, should I say only? I'm 99.99% only. Yeah. Uh, the only Town Hall 11 versus 11 trip of the war. Good old self fence. <clears throat> surprise, surprise, masked miner. Uh, very similar attack. I think he's going to do kind of what I was talking about for the Town Hall 10 attack. Just sort of a cold blooded. Um, immediate, sorry, immediately drops the miners here. But you see like that four finger drop. So what that's going to cause is it's like an Asian wall of miners. 
the thing about the back in the day when you Asian wall pace, you still can on base designs. But the idea is to keep all the defenses. So the same thing with minors, but it's got to be all buildings, not just defenses. That's the sort of the trick to it. Um, you keep them all going down in unison, so the whole army moves across the base in unison. If you start, like, see how sort of as it gets to the core, the miners start going to the outside because the core wasn't going down fast enough. But that's what these bowlers are all here for. That's what the heroes are for. Keep coring out the base. Now the re the miners split to the outside and they end up just all meeting back up around this 10 o'clock location. So there is, a, there again, like I was saying last time, guys, like there's a little bit of planning. I know it was literally just a freaking golem with a four finger drop, but um, you can quite easily deploy in a fashion where you're definitely not going to get the three star. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I definitely think that bowlers and miners need a little bit of tweaking at, at all town hall levels, but um, yeah, I don't know. And I, and I say that like it, like I I really enjoy sort of the way the game is at right now. I just feel a slight slight just slight tweak to make it like the most like I don't know like even if you could still do it, you just needed needed uh, to have a, a little bit of planning involved. A little bit more planning involved, I should say, um, about, you know, worrying about certain things, whether it be certain traps or a new defense or just even just making those units a little less powerful or cost more troop space. I don't know. There's a there's a bazillion ideas. I'm really hoping Supercell comes out with some stuff. And actually, what I did want to mention, I um, we've been watching Twitter and I saw, saw Powerbang went over to Europe. And he's talking with, um, what's his face, Galadon, about Clash Clans. And they were talking about to Supercell, I guess, about the update coming up and about potentially arranged wars. And there's this whole movement going on on Twitter. Hashtag, <laughs> give us AWs or give us arranged wars. Um, I don't know. I think that's awesome. I really hope they get some progress done there. And uh, it was nice to see some other sort of tweets from uh, Supercell. Uh, we should have a pretty uh, nice update coming up, I hope. Uh, or at least some uh, some good things to come. So anyhow, Midwinters, thank you for the good war. I'm going to call it a night here. And yeah, maybe not go to bed. I think I'm going to have another brewski. But anyways, guys, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help bag that next tree star. Until then, I'm out. <laughs>